in the Milwaukee area. The following program, it is recommended for mature audiences. Parental and viewer discretion is advised. The TV Workshop Series is produced and directed by students enrolled in the telecasting program at the Milwaukee Area Technical College. and written comedy. What do you think of that, kids? Ah. Where do they usually perform? Where do they usually perform? Very good question. There's only one night and one night only here, but any other time every week you can see them at the Bradford Beach Club at 10 o'clock at night. That's right. Or on Wednesdays you can see them at Comedy Sports and oh. that's at 8 o'clock and that's an all-ages show for you kiddies. Ah. How many people are in the dead area? Good question, kid. There's seven, count them, seven members in the dead alewives. That's right. What do you want, punk? Uh, uh, who's in the dead alewives? Well, we got Bo Johnson. We have got Peter Alvarez. We have got Mundy Carter. We have got Kurt Scholler. We have got Dan Harmon. We got Rob Straub, and we got Sean McKenna. What do you think of that? Sizzle death. What? Winnie, are you gonna shut up and start the show? What? In a minute, kid. I'm busy talking here. Get here the butt. Grant, get out of here. Don't yell so loud. You're scaring us. I'm kinda, scaring you. Kind of yeah. frightening. I'm kind of frightening. Listen, if I may quote Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who once said, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear itself and, uh, cancer. Mm. Stubbing your toe. Ow. Yeah. You have nothing to fear itself. Or you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Cancer and, uh, sure, stubbing your toe is kind of scary. Oh. Hey, what about if you cut your tongue off with dental floss? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that's pretty scary yeah, as well. Yeah, the chainsaw on the scary. face. What, Change, oh, you're what about social fears? Like, I'm afraid of coming home and, like, my girlfriend would be, like, with m my dad. Your dad? That's scary. That, that's pretty what scary, if, but... but what, what if a mother centipede laid yeah. her nest what, in what about a lobster in the thank toilet? You, thank what you, about... Thank you. 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 Heaven and earth? Heaven and earth. They're not dreamt of in our philosophies. There's a divinity that shapes our ends. Rough. You. Rough you them how. You. Rough who them how you will. You. 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 Rough you them how we will. Though this be madness, yet there is method in it. I must be cruel only... Ow! I must be cruel only to be kind. A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. This sucks! The lady does protest too much, methinks. Cat will mew! And dog will have his 
Correspondences between A.J. Voigt and Mother Teresa, and a singing telegram from the Flemish painter Hubert von Eckenpoop. But before all that, we have a special treat for you. Dinko and Pixie, two world-class minds from the Nixon Correctional Facility, are going to interpret for you the letters between Adolf Hitler and the world-famous stripper Gypsy Rose Lee. Dear Gypsy, Oh, Gypsy, you are so good at taking off your clothes. Please come to Germany while I win World War II. Love, Adolf. Dear Adolf, please send me money. I am too old to take off all my clothes for cash. Sincerely, Rose. Dear Gypsy, you are making my mustache grow. <laughs> But I am still angry, 
Sometimes I am so angry, I turn red, my veins pop, and I fall down. Last time it happened, I was speaking to the French. Boy, am I glad my PR guy was able to get the film of that blooper. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the funding for letters has been cut. Apparently some of the people at the Exxon Corporation were offended by our material and cut our funding. Some people at Exxon are a little too sensitive and won't give us any more money until we stop. So we stop. See? No more letters between Hitler and a famous old stripper. No more world-class mime work. Have they sent the money in yet? We're not doing it anymore. See? No more Nielsen Bonanza. No more cutting edge television art. Just me ranting and raving. So come on, send the money in, you environment raping destroyers of our children's future. Come on, send the money in. It's not like I have annihilated my entire career in this one vain attempt at revenge for all the pertinent television you squashed in the past on your ecologically toxic thumb, you bastard. So come on, send the money in. What's the matter? Hitler just hit too close to home? Huh? Are you angry at your clothes too? There, 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 there. Uh, what? This is, what? Uh, uh, um, they, 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 they like it. They, the, the screaming, that is. They're sending lots of money. Big bags of it. They said, keep it up. Keep it up. They like it. You. Son. Shirley Jones and David Cassidy, which can arouse any man. Let's say if you're driving in your car with your eight-track tape, and suddenly it comes over the air, your endorsed penis gets lodged in your steering wheel, causing you to swerve and hit a highway worker, killing him and throwing him in front of you, causing you to slam on your brakes, fly through your windshield, and you make it minor. Why are you doing this to me? Do you enjoy ruining my life? But um, bum, bum, narcs. We're narcs. And we're watching you. Narcs. We're narcs. You better watch what you do. Bum, bum, bum. Is he your friend or is he undercover?
cover. Just think of us as your big brother. No need to think. We'll make all the rules. Your kids will turn you in. We teach them in school. than murder by axe. Cause what you using? We can't tax. The little bit, it won't make a dent. Wrong old Bob, we got possession. We're fantastic. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, kids, on Narcs. Remember, don't do drugs or we'll be at your home next. We're narcs controlling drugs because you want us to. Hey, take it easy. Give me your money. Uh, I, I, ha I haven't got any. What the hell's that supposed to mean? I said hand over the wallet, sponge cake. Supposed to mean I'm... Broke. I'm poor. I, I've got no cash. I'm the one who's broke, jerk bag. Jeez, don't you have any money? Don't you have a job? No. Where'd you get the gun? What? Did you pay for it? Yeah. I can't afford a gun myself, see? I was just thinking the other day when I was having toast for dinner. Gee, I wish I had a gun so I could go rob somebody and have something decent to eat. Seems like you had enough money to buy the gun. Sort of feels like a uh, nine millimeter. Pretty expensive, depending on the make. But anyway, you slice it. That gun you're holding could have fed both of us. Uh, wait, shut your face. Don't, don't, go, don't go acting like I owe you a living. Uh, if people like you would get a regular job, then people like me wouldn't have to support you with so many taxes. Then I wouldn't have to resort to violence, in which case the money I spent on this gun could have gone to something more constructive. Oh, yeah? Like what? Like college for my kids. So, uh... Why don't you give me the gun? What? Yeah, see? The reason I can't get a job is because when I was 12, I stole a car in order to pay for an operation to keep my mom alive. But I was caught, and I was tried as an adult because I'm half black, and it was a racist court system at the time. Now my mom's dead, and I can't get a job because no one's going to employ somebody with a criminal record, especially not a black guy like me. So if you give me the gun, then I'll go rob somebody and then flee to a country where my criminal record will be wiped clean and that way you wouldn't have to support me with your taxes and you can give that money to your kids for college. Turn around. You don't look black to me. Actually, I'm Jewish, but it's the principle of the thing. The principle? Yeah, I mean, certainly there's somebody out there in that situation, so instead of going out and finding that person, let's say, for the sake of argument, that I am that person. Okay, all right. Then let's say for the sake of argument that I'm a Native American. Then it doesn't matter what ethnic group you're from. I was here first and my land was taken away from me. So you owe me still, even if you are a hypothetical Negro. Not if I'm half black and half Native American. That way, my country was taken away from me and then I was brought to it on a ship. So hand over the gun, Geronimo. I would, <laughs> except it's quite possible that not only am I half Indian and half black, but was raised in Mexico by five sexual women who were fired from their sexist stenographer jobs after coming out of the closet, all the while being portrayed in the 70s as scalping Europeans with feathers dangling from their comically huge afros. So I'm keeping the gun. I'm rubber. No. You're glue. Damn, everything I say bounces off me and sticks to you. Stick them up, oppressor. Nice job, Ted. Yeah, that's good. See you tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Hi. We're going to play a little game called Freeze now. In the game of Freeze, what's going to happen is these two guys, Peter and Rob, are going to start a scene based
based on one of our cameramen's uh, suggestions. Then what's going to happen is they're going to start a scene. Any one of us off to the side will yell, freeze, jump in, take one of their positions exactly, and base a brand new scene based on those positions. You'll get it as it goes along. So, hey, anybody, let's get a, uh, a, a activity. Kung Fu. Kung Fu is the activity. Peter, Rob, Kung Fu. Okay, is there any way to get Rob's hands apart after the savage Dr. Nelson has stitched them together? <laughs> Reply, hey, Aha, uh -huh, I'm going to stitch your hands together too! Yeah! Yeah! been a problem of mine all my life. People walk up to me on the street and think, hey, he's got a nice nostril. I'll just pick his nose. And it's horrible. So please, send your money now to the number on the screen. There's no number on the screen. But anyway, there's people who like to come up to me, smell my armpit. Hygiene's important to me. Right. Yeah, so I don't know. Give it a whirl. Oh, gosh, my inflatable towel is all lit out of air. Now I have no one to play with. I'll get out another one. Freeze! <laughs> Money, come here, come here. The Macy's Day Bowwinkle float is left unattended. Let's let all the air out. All right. Freeze! I said, which way to the post office, old man? Sean, I don't think you should shout an old man here anymore because uh, you killed this one, and I think you might kill this one, too. Freeze! So chaperoning for you two. Uh, just don't mind me. <laughs> Your dad says it's necessary. I'll just watch the movie. Okay, that's the end of uh, the, the show. Thanks a lot. We're the Dead Ale Wives, <laughs> and uh, we told you where you could see us at uh, Bradford Beach Club Tuesday night at <laughs> 10 o'clock. Uh, comedy Sports at, at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. Listen to us, WMSC, every Tuesday from noon to 3. Goodbye, folks! <laughs>
The TV Workshop Series is produced and directed by students enrolled in the telecasting program at the Milwaukee Area Technical College. <laughs>